Imagine you are a very important person who needs to make long business trips on the regular. We're talking New York to Shanghai kind of deal, a 14 hour flight. Even if you're balling in first class, that's just too damn long to be on an airplane. So what if instead of all that, you were able to bridge that 7,000 mile difference in just 40 minutes? Well, if you switch out the airplane for Elon Musk's Starship rocket, then this could be possible. Is SpaceX the future of long haul aviation? Hey, Elonites, welcome to the Tesla space where we share the latest news, rumors, and insights into all things Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk. So with the recent success of the SpaceX Starship SN10 prototype, we wanted to revisit the concept of this vehicle being used not only for space exploration, but also as a point to point transport right here on Earth. Airplanes are out, rockets are in. Just for some context, the Starship is the most advanced aerospace vehicle that is currently in development. This is the vehicle that will eventually be able to take people to Mars, but it can also go to the moon. It can deliver satellites into orbit. It can fly around inside the atmosphere. Starship is an extremely versatile rocket because it is 100% reusable. The whole thing is designed to be flown and landed over and over again, just like an airplane, and that is a big deal. Think about those old rockets that used to fly astronauts to the moon back in the 60s. A huge skyscraper sized ship would go up, but only the tiny capsule with the people inside would come back down. Everything else just gets left behind up there and either burns up on the way back down or contributes to ever growing collection of garbage in space. And that's obviously not the ideal way to go about this whole thing. And that's why the Starship tests that we have seen so far have been focused on going up and coming back down under control. They started testing this system just about two years ago in spring of 2019. The first few iterations, which were called Starhopper and pretty much looked like a steel grain silo, they basically just went up a short distance of about 500 feet and then came back down. Things started to get serious with the Starship SN8 prototype. Not only did it look like a spaceship, but they started to flex what this thing was really capable of. The idea with these new generation of prototypes is they launch up a few miles and then hover in the air under power from the Raptor engines. Then the ship does a kind of belly flop and comes back down like a skydiver. And when it's near the ground, the engines refire to straighten the ship back out and bring it down for a controlled vertical landing. The first time they tried this, the SN8 experienced a low pressure issue in the fuel tank and it came down too hard and exploded. The second attempt with the SN9 went pretty much the same. An engine failed to reignite on landing and the whole thing just slapped the ground and exploded. The SN10 attempt that happened just last week was their most successful to date. It came down under control with all engines firing and actually landed on the ground in one piece and then exploded about 15 minutes later. This is where we get back to the idea of replacing long haul airplane flights with starships. Imagine that same maneuver of blasting up miles and miles above the earth and then coming back down in any location you want. Launching in New York, landing in Shanghai and not exploding. That would be insane. Now, this is an idea that Elon has been talking about for years now. He sees it as something that could be happening within this decade. His idea is that about a thousand people could be fit into each Starship flight because they wouldn't need large seats, toilets, or food services. The passengers would only be in the air for about 15 to 20 minutes. Elon said that it's basically an ICBM traveling at Mach 25 that lands. Now this is pretty much a 21st century take on the same idea as the Concorde jet, using cutting edge aerospace technology to help move rich people around the world very quickly. I realize people under 30 might not be very familiar with the Concorde, so that was a supersonic passenger jet that was actually built back in the 70s and ran until about 2003. It was able to fly across the Atlantic Ocean at 1,354 miles per hour or just over twice the speed of sound. That got you where you were going in about half the time of a regular jet plane. It was a ridiculous, unnecessary project that was just spectacularly expensive for the British and French joint venture to develop. It cost them something like four or five billion dollars in late 70s money when you could buy a whole house for like 20,000. And of course it was not cheap to ride. 
Obviously, the price fluctuated over the decades, but most people tend to agree that the round-trip price from New York to London would work out to around $12,000 in today's money. And this Starship scheme would be pretty much in the same ballpark as the old Concorde jet. It would be very expensive, it would be logistically insane, but it would get people from one place to another as fast as humanly possible. And there were studies released in the past where the market value of point-to-point -point space travel was estimated to reach $20 billion by the year 2030. And the idea is that this would only be used to supplement long-haul flights over 10 hours in duration. And there are currently about 800 airline routes that fall into that category, and they service around 150 million passengers yearly. And there absolutely would be a certain percentage of those passengers that would be willing and able to pay the price, probably somewhere between $12,000 and $20,000 per flight to save themselves 8 or 12 hours of time. Obviously, for us average schmucks, that wouldn't make any sense, but there are definitely people out there whose time is worth that much money. And just a quick interruption to let you guys know that we have started publishing our own newsletter. It's a weekly update on Tesla, SpaceX, and all things Elon Musk. You can sign up using our link in the description, only takes a second to do. And while you're down there clicking the link, please give this video a thumbs up to help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Now, how would this system work logistically? That's a fun problem to think about. This wouldn't be going to the airport. SpaceX would need launch and landing pads in every destination city or somewhere near the city, that is. Because as cool of an idea as it is to imagine a Starship landing on some floating pad in the New York Harbor, that just could never work in real life. Rocket launches are incredibly dramatic. There is an epic noise and smoke and the earth rumbles, the whole nine yards. So that could never happen within city limits. These rocket ports would have to be much further out than a regular airport, which presents a whole new problem of how do you get these passengers that last few miles to their final destination. The luxury of this whole experience kind of wears off once you're back on the ground, especially if you've got to travel a few more hours just to get to your final destination anyway. In my mind, the solution here is electric vertical takeoff and landing drones. And in my opinion, SpaceX are in a prime situation to capitalize here because Elon Musk just happens to also own an electric vehicle company. So imagine a fleet of Tesla brand flying cars standing by to ferry you directly from your rocket landing pad to your luxury hotel accommodations. That's how you travel like a true baller in the 21st century. Okay, one more problem with this whole idea that I need to address because hardly anyone else ever brings this up when speculating about the whole commercial spaceflight industry. We are talking about taking a big group of regular, average people and launching them into space on a rocket, then having it plummet back to Earth at 25 times the speed of sound. This isn't like a Star Trek style luxury cruise through space. This is going to be an extremely violent hell ride straight up where everyone on the ship will experience something like five times the force of gravity, then reach weightlessness in time for the air to become saturated with floating vomit before dropping like a sack back down to the hard surface of the earth. I know we all want to pretend like we could just handle this kind of situation like a boss, but realistically, what percentage of those customers do you think would be experiencing the most severe panic attack imaginable? Astronauts train for years and condition their bodies in grueling simulations to be able to achieve human spaceflight. I know it sounds amazing in theory, but the closer you bring your expectations back to reality, the more fantastical this starts to become. And that's the thing with Elon Musk. He has a tendency to kind of think out loud and say wild, spectacular things, and people tend to take him seriously because he does accomplish most of what he says, even if it does usually take twice as long to accomplish as he promises. So when Elon says things like people can just ride a spaceship from New York to China, or that Tesla Roadsters will have rocket thrusters that make the car hover, we all just kind of say, yeah, that's amazing. I can't wait. But come on, really, the car won't hover on gas thrusters. That would be amazing, but if Tesla actually releases a production car that can launch itself into the air, I will literally eat my own hat on camera for all of you to see. And even as I say that, I am slightly hesitant because I do not want to bet against Elon Musk. But how realistic is point-to-point -point space travel on the Earth? Let us know what you're all thinking in the comment section below. This is just a fun idea to talk about. I just feel that we are a little further away than some people like to lead us on to believe. 
Quick reminder to sign up for our newsletter for more Tesla news and speculation. There's a link down below at the teslaspace.com. Interested in cryptocurrency? Check out our partners at BlockFi. Use our link to receive $250 in free Bitcoin when you sign up. And if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.